What was the gut feeling that you listened to that saved your life? These are Reddit's best answers to that question. Not mine, but my mother's. I was five and walking with my mum to visit a friend. We were going to have lunch and see her new kitten. We walked up the driveway and my mother stopped to look at the front of the house. She noticed all the windows facing the street were closed with the curtains down. Very unusual for her friend who enjoyed watching birds at the feeders placed throughout the yard. She quickly picked me up and began back down the driveway. I protested that I was hungry and wanted to see the kitten. My mum hushed me and carried me home. This was in the late 70s before cell phones. She called her friend several times and then called my father and asked him to check on her friend as she was worried. My mum was right to be worried. Her friend had been awed and murdered by an intruder. He was never caught. Something about those closed drapes warned my mother away from that home and may have saved us from an encounter with an evil person. Oh my gosh. I was 18, freshly out of high school and got a job at a newly opened pizza place. The crew was all younger kids around my age. I quickly befriended another girl working there, but there was a guy, maybe a year or two older than me, who just gave me the weirdest vibes. I just felt uncomfortable being around him. He didn't really do anything outright strange. He hit on me and kept asking for my number, but I had a boyfriend, now my husband, and I kept turning this guy down. He was never rude about it or anything, so I had no real reason to feel anything was off about him, but I did. Sometimes while I was working, I'd feel like someone was staring at me and I'd turn around and he'd be watching me from the other side of the kitchen. I remember telling the girl I'd befriended that I just felt something was off about that guy and he made my skin crawl. Another coworker who had gone to school with the guy overheard the conversation and told me that he understood. His friend could be intense and off-putting, but he was mostly harmless. The other girl and I just kind of tried to laugh it off but she agreed that something just didn't feel right. I always worked the late shift so I could start after my college classes and I worked until close. One night, the creepy guy got off work maybe an hour or two before close and I was scheduled to close. So he leaves at his scheduled time and I work until close and then I go to leave and walk to my car. This is around 1 a.m. and of course it's super dark. As I'm walking to my car, I notice someone else in the parking lot. It was the creepy guy and he was just standing there watching me his car was still there so he wasn't waiting for a ride he just waited for me to leave i got in my car and felt just incredibly weirded out by the entire thing so i left went home to my apartment told my partner what happened and then sent my manager a text and said i was sorry but that creepy guy was making me uncomfortable to the point that i couldn't work there anymore and that had been my last night I never went back. About a month later, I see on the news that the creepy guy from the pizza place had followed the other girl from work, the one I'd been friends with, one night after a closing shift. He'd waited outside her house in the dark, broke in when everyone was asleep, murdered her dad, and held her hostage slash assaulted her for hours while the police and SWAT team tried to get him out of the house. I still think about her a lot, and at the time, I felt genuinely guilty about what happened to her, as if I could have done something to prevent it. Oh my goodness me. I don't think there's anything you could have done to prevent it. The only thing that you did was get out of there because you felt creeped out. You're just lucky this wasn't you. As as bad as that sounds, what a terrible, terrible thing to happen. I was driving uphill behind a flatbed truck carrying I-beams and I envisioned them sliding off the truck and hitting my windshield. I changed lanes so I wasn't behind the truck and two seconds later, the I-beams were sliding off onto the road where my car would have been, sparking and gouging the pavement. Terrifying. To this day, I won't stay behind the truck with anything that's strapped down in inverted commas. I was pregnant in the very early weeks, five, six weeks. And I started getting these intense pains on the right side of my abdomen, like so extremely painful that I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't make noise or move. I went to my doctor the next day and he said I was being hysterical and it's completely normal to be in pain when you're pregnant. He refused to get me to an OBGYN and said that I could go private if it was such a big deal. I went to a private scan and my pregnancy was ectopic, stuck in my fallopian tube and my tube had ruptured and I was bleeding internally. I was rushed to hospital and had surgery to remove my tube that night. If I hadn't booked that scan, I would have died in my sleep that night due to the internal bleeding. Oh, goodness me. That is 
That is terrible. Not my life, but my son's. I was 33 weeks pregnant and I noticed that my son wasn't moving as much as usual. I waited a day and nothing changed. Despite advice by doctors and family saying I should just stay home and he wasn't moving as much because he was just running out of room to move, I went into the ER and had my son that night due to fetal distress. He had his umbilical cord wrapped around his neck eight times and weighed just three pounds. He spent 30 days in the NICU and now is a happy two-year-old. Well, I guess the moral of those two stories is if you ever think that something is wrong, just get to the ER or A&E as quickly as you can and, and yeah, better safe than sorry. I will say though, the, the previous one, I mean, having to go private, absolute disgrace, absolute disgrace. I mean, it's just poor from the, from the first GP really, but hey, it happens too much, sadly. Oh, look, and here we go again. The lump wasn't a cyst and the rib pain wasn't just from coughing too hard. That was cancer. Great. I agree with this comment. So sad or scary how many of these are about convincing doctors that something is wrong. Again, I mean the previous two, right? And now this one. Someone else has written down below. As I write this, I'm recovering from the removal of a melanoma. I asked my doctor for a referral to see a dermatologist for this growth on my skin twice, about three years ago first, but she simply dismissed it. Then two months ago, it started bleeding and this time I insisted on a biopsy which came back as a melanoma. Superficial spreading luckily, though the bleeding indicated that it was starting to get worse. Oh, and instead of referring me to a dermatologist, she shaved the biopsy itself, but didn't do it deeply enough. I'm all good, thankfully. Margin and lymph node biopsies came back negative for cancer. But oh my freaking God, I should have listened to my gut feeling telling me that thing didn't belong there. Okay, you know what? This is just a warning to everyone. If you've got something on your body or to do with your health that you're not sure about, just go and get it checked out. And by the way, me saying this right now is also a warning to myself because I probably do not do that enough. So uh, yeah, you right there, young Jack, watching this episode back, take your own advice. Now the question is, is 25 young? That's one for the comments. When I was 13, I was walking to the bus stop in the morning. A car was going through my neighborhood very slowly, which made alarm bells go off in my head. When it passed me, I glanced over my shoulder to keep an eye on it and saw it was doing an immediate U-turn. Goodness me, that would terrify you. What the heck? Noped right out and I dove through the bushes, crossed a bunch of driveways and found a neighbor who was washing his car. I looked back to where I'd been standing. The strange car had stopped. A seriously scary looking dude had gotten out and was looking in the bushes. I don't know if I would have died exactly, but I would not have had a good time. I mean, you say that, maybe you're in to getting kidnapped and stuff like that. It's not really that funny, is it? Quite dark, isn't it, really, this thread? But let's carry on. Not saved a life, but definitely serious injury. We had a workshop in our place and we had to book them in. So Brad thought it would be fun to hold a nail gun in for a pair on someone's hand. Uh, Brad, that is pretty stupid, my friend. We both told him off for it, but he retorted, it's all right, I checked it, it's got no nails in it. And then he used it on the table instead, and bang, it goes right through the table. It turns out that yes, it didn't have any nails, but the firing pin had snapped inside, and that nailed into the table before being reset back into the nail gun. He never messed about with nail guns again. Thank the Lord. Once I was walking back from a store with my friend, we were already in a neighborhood area near a little park. It was pretty safe where we were. She had her headphones in, but I didn't. At this point, I'd noticed a white van that had been trailing behind us since the Trader Joe's parking lot. Oh gosh. I didn't think much of it, but I realized that the windows were tinted, like dark. Now, this was a red flag for me, where the gut feeling started. We walked for about two more minutes and it was still there. There were two guys in the car and one of them rolled down their window, smiled at me, and then turned to the driver. He spoke Spanish, but so did I. I swore I heard him say, this should be easy, huh? Then I noticed the van about to park next to us. At this point, my friend noticed too and glanced at me. One of the men was about to speak to us, but we ran full sprint down the sidewalk to the park at the end. There were always people with dogs there, so it was the safest place at that moment. This was at about 4 p.m., so it wasn't even that late. I don't know what would have happened, but if we'd kept walking like normal, I'd have an idea of what would have. Also, I was 13 at the time and my friend was 12. We literally were not going to be able to fight two adult men. And yes, 
Maybe they had no bad intentions, but I'd rather be safe than sorry with a bottle of Rehypnol down my throat. There we go. What a powerful last line. Now, guys, I admit that so far this, this episode, this thread has been pretty dark, but don't worry. This next one is a lot more positive. So here we go. My grandmother accidentally saved my mum's life by not allowing her to go to a sleepover when she was young. During the night, the father murdered his entire family and would likely have killed my mother had she been there. There we go. Positivity has returned. It was very late driving and there were minimal cars on the road. I came up to a red light and as it turned green, something inside me said, don't go yet. And a van blew through their red. Oh my goodness me. That is awful. I mean, that's the thing with traffic lights, really. They don't 100% say you can go and nothing is going to come. All it means is that it is your right of way. Simple as that. If, if another pedestrian is, is or another, you know, driver is doesn't care, under the influence, misses it, is on their phone, who cares if the light's red or green? You're still dead, um, to be honest. So I wonder why you got that thought. Maybe you just, yeah, had a gut feeling shock in middle school i was up late one night mum and brother asleep dad gone on business i'd let the dog out and when i went to go get him i got a bad feeling like somebody was out there there wasn't really a reason to feel this way it was just dark and i got spooked so i put the chain lock up on the back door when we got back inside back then we never locked our doors a few minutes later the dog is drinking by the back door and he suddenly stops and starts growling like a low grumble at the door. I was sitting where I could see the dog, but not the door. Then I hear the door pull open and the chain lock catch. The dog started barking like crazy and I ran upstairs to wake my brother up. He went out and looked around, but no one was there. I think the dog's barking scared them away, but I don't know who it was or what would have happened if I hadn't locked the door. Oh my goodness me, that is terrifying. My ex-wife attempted to invite me to a get-together to help mend old wounds. Now, I felt off about it and I turned it down. I found out a week or so later from a friend she had a falling out with that she wanted me there so she could say that I tried to ah oh, her. Oh, wow, yeah, what a comment, hey? What a lovely woman. OP's replied, yep, I wasn't the best at picking women way back when I was younger. Yes. Clearly, my friend. And now for our final response to the question, what was the gut feeling you listened to that saved your life of this episode? My husband and I were snorkeling in the late afternoon slash early evening in Hawaii on our honeymoon. It was this beautiful bay and the marine life was unforgettable. My husband got excited and waved me to swim out further to where he was. He is a very strong swimmer and he likes to push boundaries as well. When I got there, there were all these fish tightly packed into the rocks hundreds of them squishing in as tightly as possible. When I saw that, my gut feeling was, we need to get the frick out of here. He didn't realize that this was a fear response from the fish and was so excited to see so many. I begged him that we need to get out of the water. Something is wrong. Fish don't behave like this. I got desperate and even tried pulling him with me. Finally, instinct took over and I took off back to shore. He followed me around 10 minutes later, annoyed that I'd cut the swim short. Next day, it was on the news that a tiger shark had been in the area and attacked two locals. One man lost a leg. Now, I'm not saying the tiger shark was there licking its chops. It could have been something else that spooked the fish. But now my husband listens to me when I say, gut feeling says no. So guys, there we go. Now it's time for you to get involved. Get in the comments down below. Do you have an answer to the question? What was the gut feeling that you listened to that saved your life? To be honest, my general takeaway from this one is that ultimately, what do you really lose if you do listen to your gut feeling and nothing happens, right? You've got to trust your gut. And, you know, who cares if you don't see fish for a few minutes? You've, you've seen them enough, right? It's not going to be the end of the world. However, if you have a really, really, really bad feeling in your gut that something bad is going to happen, you don't listen to it, and then it does well first of all you can never live with yourself and second of all you might be dead anyway but yeah guys hope you enjoyed this one and please do get in the comments down below with your own answers to the question